Hi, God bless you tonight. Welcome. Uh, my name is Brother Danny Gonzalez, and tonight I'm here to represent the Wayworld Outreach Ministries. Uh, we are part of the prison ministry team all the way from San Bernardino, California. And it's such a, pr a pleasure to be here and an awesome time we've been having. Uh, we come out here uh, on Mondays. You'll see us uh, live on Facebook and uh, Apple Cable TV, another, a few other uh, programs, the Cross TV Network. So you know what? Plug in, plug in to Facebook, and you'll be able to see us live as well as other cable channels as well. Uh, so we have an exciting evening for you. We have uh, some music. We have uh, some testimonies of what's going on in our prisons as well as an awesome word for you tonight. Uh, tonight I'd like to thank our pastor Marco Garcia as well as Pastor Robert uh, for allowing us to be here tonight and also our pastor Joe and Diana Balderas who happen to be out of town tonight. They are getting ready to do some training to open up a new church all the way in Medford, Oregon. So uh, without further ado, I want to be able to sing this song for you. It's called Jesus Came to Change. God bless you. I hope you enjoy this song. He died on the cross to free us from all sin. He died on Calvary for you and me in hopes that we would see that Jesus came to change, to change my sinful way. Give your life today to the Lord. Yeah, to the Lord. Yeah, listen to this part right here. Well, three days later, my friend. He conquered death and rose from the grave. Yeah. So how could anybody tell me that, that my Lord, he does not live, oh Jesus. Yeah. And when I feel his love inside of me, it feels so real. Yeah. Jesus came to change. To change our sinful way, won't you give your heart today to the The Bible says that, therefore, any man be in Christ, that he is a new creation. But behold, all things, and I mean all things, have become new in him. Amen? Listen, if you're out there and you don't know Jesus Christ, we want to give you an invitation to get to know someone who loves you, someone who died for you, someone who thought of you, that the Bible says that when we were still yet in our sin, that Christ died for the ungodly. Amen? So I stand here today, a new man in him, a new creation, because of what God has done in my life. And we want to give you that opportunity tonight. God loves you tonight. Jesus came to change, to change our sinful way. Won't you give your life today to the Lord? Amen. God. 
God bless you. God bless you. We love you. Amen. Amen. Well, it's such a blessing to be here once again. And, uh, you know, God is so good. Amen. And, you know, God is uh, just doing something amazing in all of our lives. I know for me, I've been saved 24 years now. And you know what? It hasn't been an easy road. But my testimony is when I first got saved, I was actually, you know, strung out on methamphetamine. I had been up for like eight days. And I remember I was really just trying to come down off my high. So what I did in that motel room, I just put on a Billy Graham uh, special because I thought if I listen to a Christian program, I'm going to fall asleep fast like that. But little did I know that God was setting me up. And when I started to hear the message, God did something right there. The Holy Spirit began to come into that room. And I remember I said that sinner's prayer. And you know what? Since then, man, God has been so good to me. He was able to heal me of my addictions, heal me of many things. Amen. And, you know, God has been able to use my life to travel the world. And now I'm part of such an awesome ministry, the Wayworld Outreach and our prison ministry team, where we're able to go to many prisons, jails, and juvenile halls. And tonight I want to introduce to you uh, one of our leaders, and this is Diana Holguin, who's part of our prison ministry team, and she's one of our leaders. And I would like to, uh, for her to share a little bit briefly about her life and what's going on in the prisons as well. Yeah. Welcome, Diana. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Um, I want to first share, uh, thank the Lord for, for saving me. Um, I was married for 25 years, and the whole time I was married, I battled uh, methamphetamine addiction for 27 years. And um, I affected my, my house, my children. And to be able to get saved and have the Lord show me what's out there for us and what we've done as a generation, what we do to our children, what, we, what society has done, allows me to go into the juvenile halls and give back some of that. Um, it's, it's hard for me to not go in there and be a, a mother figure to them in the juvenile halls. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how I go in there and I see their faces. They're hurting and they're broken. And they're wearing this face where, what do you want with me? You know, you're wasting my time here. And we just go in there and we give them the love of God. And we just, we don't come in there speaking about God. We just come in there and love on mm -hmm. them. And we go a couple times and just love on them. And then they start to open up to us, and they start to share. And I had the honor to speak to this young woman who uh, her parents were deported. She gave me her story. Her parents were deported at the age of 14, and she was left here in the city of LA to fend for herself. And so she became hurt. She was angry. She was dealing with a lot of things just to survive. And uh, long story short, She's looking at 55 years to life for a double homicide where she felt like her life was over. And uh, just being able to speak to her and letting her say what happened to her allowed her to have hope. Uh, we got to, I got to give her my testimony and tell her why I do what I do. So she was happy to, to have that. And she said she wanted to give back like I was doing, and it made me happy that the Lord gave me that so that she can give back. I told her, you know, I, I've never been in prison, but I was in prison in my mind. I was in the streets, addicted, and I was in prison. You're in prison in here, and you can be free, and you can help people be free, and you can share that with them. And she said, that's what I want to do. She said, help me, lead me. So we got to lead her to the sinner's prayer, and when I left her joy, she was so excited. When are you coming back? I'm going to read every day. And that, that is why we do the prison ministry that we do. And it's the same thing when we go to the men's prisons and the women's prisons, just to bring them that hope and to hear our testimonies. And they share theirs. It's just God's work. And it, it's amazing. It's powerful. And I wouldn't trade it for any high that I've ever had. This is the best high I've ever had. Wow. Thank you, Sister Diana. And I understand your uh, husband, who I know really well, yes. he comes, goes in there with yes. you uh, when he can, right? So yes. another uh, testimony of a dynamic couple that God has called together, and they do ministry together. Uh, and that's just so awesome. How does that feel to be with your husband and do ministry side by side? 
it's amazing because like I said, I was married before for 25 years and the entire time it was, uh, we were on drugs. And so um, when I finally got on my knees and surrendered to the Lord, he had tried to attempt to get to me so many ways. And it wasn't until he came and they raided my house and they, they took my son, my oldest son. They said that he was part of something that wasn't. But I thought they were coming for me. And God was trying to catch my attention over and over, and he couldn't do it. I wasn't, I wasn't listening. So when he took my son, I surrendered, and I dropped to my knees, and I said, I can't do this anymore. I need a godly man. I need a man that's going to stand with me and restore my life. And within a month's time, I got together with this guy, and we've been serving. We went to the altar together, and we got set free at the altar mm. after a 27-year wow. for me and mm. a 22-year for him uh, drug addiction. We left it at the altar. Mm. So yes. we've been serving together yeah. for five years now, and we've been clean six. We actually got married a year from the time of our anniversary from being clean. So we are clean one year more than we've been married, and it's, it's been an awesome road. I, wouldn't, I thank God every day for him. I thank God every day for God. Amen. Amen. Thank you God. for sharing that. Wow. Amen. And, you know, if you're out there and you're listening, you know, one of the things that Sister Diana was saying is that, you know what, she didn't really clean herself up. She just went to the altar. And, you know, God is so good. The Bible says that if you taste and see that the Lord is good, man, you will be satisfied. Mm. And you won't want to go back to those drugs. You won't want to go back to that alcohol because God is fulfilling. He fulfills you. That peace that we look for. I remember when I was out there, I was searching for a peace and a love. And I never found it. Mm. But it wasn't until I gave my life to Jesus Christ that I found that true joy, that true peace. Amen. Amen. And so thank you for sharing that, Sister yeah, Diana. And awesome. now today she's one of our leaders and uh, she travels all over. And, you know, God has some amazing plans for them. Amen. So thank yes. you for thank being here for tonight. And we look yes. forward to, to much more ministry with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to introduce to you our next uh, speaker. He's a very close friend of mine. Uh, we get to do side-by-side -side ministry together. Uh, we've written plays together. We've done music together. We've traveled all over together. Uh, we've bumped heads together. But you know what? God has just done a tremendous uh, thing in this man's life. And I'm so honored that, you know, I could work side-by-side -side with him. And I want to give it over to Brother Mark Robolo, who's going to be sharing a word tonight. Brother okay. Mark. Uh, thank you, Brother Danny. Oh, man, yeah. B bumping heads, you're right, you know. <laughs> but you know what? I mean... Think about it, every, every married couple, every loved one bumps heads. You know, when you get close to somebody, you know, you end up having little small disagreements. But after that, you know, we're, we're able to get past that and move on and learn from it and, and be, have a closer bond as a friend, you know, like a, as a friendship. He's like more like a family member to me, you know. It's, uh, it's just awesome, man, you know, the closest we got through these things, you know, that, that we overcame and uh, just able to sit and forgive and uh, see why these things, are, you know, keep rising up, you know. But um, most of all, I thank Brother Danny, man, just for really showing love through it all, you know, and having, uh, <laughs> sometimes I tell him, man, thanks for having patience with me because, you know, me, um, you know, I'm, even though I'm saved and everything, doesn't mean I'm fully developed in every area. There's areas that I still need work on. And Brother Danny, I, I just think that he points those things out, not to condemn me, not to, you know, put me down over him, but to, to, to so I could see him myself because sometimes we don't want to see our own mess in the mirror so he shows me that and then he says you know i'm praying for you brother and i'm like you're praying for me i get a little offensive because like why are you praying for me you know <laughs> like man you know i you get a little offended from that but you know really all in all he just wants me to get built up in the lord and get the fullness of god and, and the fullness potential that i could you know that i could get to as a, as a believer in christ you know so I thank you, and um, you know, I'm just, Amen. I'm just here, man. You know, I've been, uh, been saved about, um, uh, going on eight years now. Uh, I've been at the Way World Outreach, uh, going on uh, five, uh, I think five and a half years now. And um, you know, I, I met Brother Danny, and um, you know, like he said, we wrote plays together. We did a, a, a lot of ministry together, you know. And um, it's not us, it's not us. Our, our, our talents at writing, you know, these gifts come from up above. You know, there's, there's gifts you got, but there's spiritual gifts where, like, you never thought you could just use these but god gives them to you to use for his kingdom you know what i mean and um it's just so amazing you know that we uh you know uh, do ministry side by side and um i also go inside the juvenile halls and um do a little ministry in there um every other weekend i'm there serving uh doing bible study that's where i do my church at and um these little kids like she said it's just they grab your heart you know because 
they're lost. You know, really, they, they don't have no direction and they just don't have no, um, most of them don't have a father, a father figure in their life, you know. So us going in there, we become that father figure, you know, and we let them know, you know, um, you know, God, like a lot of us, I grew up with no dad, you know, but uh, once God became, you know, uh, uh, into my life and I accepted Christ as my savior, he became my father, you know, uh, not something that a physical father can't do, you know what I mean? Love you unconditionally, you know what I mean? And uh, the love of God, that's what we do. We just go back in there and show them the love God gave to us mm -hmm. and it just comes out of us. We don't do nothing special. We don't go, uh, go with like a whole uh, plan. We, we got time so that we got to, you know, stick to and why not take a quick drink of water. <clears throat> but all in all, it's the God inside of us that comes out. <coughs> oh, excuse me. The God inside of us that they see and that they fall in love with. It's not us, nothing to do with us because, you know, God, you know, it says uh, in a Bible verse, he chose the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. A lot of us here sitting up here, a lot of testimonies you heard, you know, a lot of us came from the streets especially prison ministry, why we do this. We came from this background. We go in now and we tell them about the love of Christ and what he could do in some, a man's life. And he could like set you free and change you from what you think you are, what you've been told you were, that you're a nothing, you're a nobody. But God, he shows you that there's life in Christ and uh, he can make you a new creation. Mm -hmm. Like Brother Danny was saying, like we were speaking about earlier. And uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing, Danny, just serving yeah. the Lord and, uh, you know, just uh, trying to grow in every aspect of life, you know, wh where he wants me to grow at. Right. You know, I've seen Mark's uh, life just really develop over the years. And, man, this, this man is such an awesome example. You know, he not only um, talks about it, but he lives it. You know, he shares the love of God with others. I've seen him in action, I should say, but it's really God working in his life because he's allowed God to work in his life. So when he's out there in those camps, just giving a word and encouraging people to go there, you know what, he's the real deal, you know, and he's allowed God to really, you know, develop him. And, you know, I just thank God for you because he's really making a difference out in those juvenile, uh, juvenile, Halls as well as the camps, like uh, with Sister Diana, not only there, but he's going to be heading a team up to uh, Pelican Bay, right, pretty yeah. soon, and uh, a team up there that's going to be going up there in a few months in June, actually, and we're going to be hitting those uh, shoes, shoe programs, shoe right? Program. The shoe, and I think there's how many in there? Like 600. Yeah, there's. I know a... we've all been there together, right? Yeah, yes. And uh, so we we need to hit them all the time, amen, because God is doing something amazing there, and. Uh, there's a scripture that reminds me, Brother Mark, is, you know, where sin abounded, that his grace abounded mm. much more. Right. And whether you were in prison or whether you were in someone like me who didn't do prison time, but yet I was still in my own prison because I uh, was just pretty much bound in sin, mm. you know. But the good news today is that God could set you free. Amen. Amen. And Brother Mark, if you want to share anything, you know, feel free to take the platform. Amen. Um, you know, actually, I have this letter. Uh, I think we have a little time I want to share. It's a letter from prison. And, um, you know, we're, we're not around, uh, allowed to, you know, write the inmates. We got a pen pal ministry for that. But this letter is uh, directly from my uncle. And my uncle, which is my dad's uh, twin brother, and this was directed, this letter wasn't to me, it was for uh, my cousin, which is in our men's home at the Way World Outreach. We have a men's home where these guys are getting discipled and, I mean, um, you know, set free, man. It's just amazing. My cousin went in there, you know, strung out on meth, fresh off the streets, in about three weeks, he was on fire for the Lord, like, you know, just on fire, you know. And he remembers he got saved. He gave his life to the Lord, but he kind of walked away, and he fell back in his mess. And, and, and there's a scripture about talking about uh, it's like a, a dog going back to his vomit. You know, he was, he was feeling nasty out there. He was trying to avoid my calls, you know, and, and, and he was just lost. He was stuck in his mess, but now he's on fire for the Lord, and he remembers what God did for him. He had to get, get that brought back to him because sometimes you can forget if you're in the world, living in the world, you can forget those things, what God did for you. And um, I just want to share the letter my uncle wrote to him. And uh, my uncle just gave his life to the Lord maybe about in the last month and a half. So I just want to show the, uh, share this letter. It's, uh, hey, bro, I was uh, so blessed by our phone conversation. I had to write to let you know how pro, uh, proud I am and overjoyed that you are on the right path. I can tell you that, really, that you really love God and that he has touched your heart and changed you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, or talk, touch my heart how uh, good is God. We were once side by side in a racial riot and both lost and strung out on drugs. And now here we are on the phone praising God. God is great. I'm on the other side now. I was ashamed to admit it 
to you before I got myself into a wreck in prison, but I truly believe I would have never found God if I don't, if I didn't do what I did. 20 years in the dark in shackles, I finally got on my knees and asked God to break my addiction. But it meant it from, I meant it from my heart and it was gone. Just like that, mm -hmm. I felt it. No withdrawals, nothing. So now I'm in the light, mijo. I, I'm free. God has set me free. I may not ever get released, but for the first time for 20 years, I'm free. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. My cousin was reading this letter in front of me because I gave it to him. Um, like I said, he's in our man's home, and my cousin just tears coming down his eye, just running down his eye because he did time with my uncle, you know, and, and they're both related to me. And um, just to see now my uncle's in there serving the Lord, and it's just it just touched him. And to get this letter, it was just so powerful, man. And wow. it's just, uh, it, yeah. So it's just, it's just the seeds that we, we, we give to people and we tell them about our life and, and our life in Christ now, and, and they may not listen. They might, it may not look like they're listening, but deep down inside, that seed's getting planted, and someone may come along later on and water that seed and tell them about Christ and what Christ has did for them. And that's what happened with my uncle. He came in, reception center. Someone started preaching to him about Christ. He said, hey, my nephew, you know, he's a believer in this and that. And he just started sharing the love of God. And he, my uncle got touched. And then all of a sudden, he said, man, why don't you come to one of our little Bible studies and this and that. He said, man, I'll give it a try. And then right in that Bible study, man, he got touched by the love of God. And now he's, he's, he's full-on believer. He's walking the yard, the, the yard in, in the prison evangelizing, telling people about Christ. Wow. Just that fast, Christ could come into any of your lives and set you free. And, and, and make you a new a new man a new creation you know and um it's just it's just amazing and that's why we do what we do brother danny we why we go into these prisons right. and tell people about the love of god you know a lot of people won't go into prison and tell these people you know they given up you know on the prisoners you know and um there's a, a scripture uh, uh matthew 25 36 right brother mm -hmm. danny um um you want to want to uh, say that it's, it's uh, about the prisoner about going to see the prisoner about going to see the prisoner yeah well i know the word of god uh what it says is that uh if if you visited me in prison then uh you've done it unto the lord if you've uh clothed the naked uh then you did it unto the lord you did it unto the least of these but it's amazing when we go there that uh god shows up uh, so it's, it's ironic that when we do walk into the prisons, God is there because the Bible says he went before us and he made the crooked places straight. And he also gave us a promise in Deuteronomy and Joshua that wherever we sow uh, our foot, wherever it treads, that the land mm. I've given you. And I say that quite often that when we go, we have so much favor, right? Yeah. And it's not us. There's nothing amazingly that we are. It's the God in us. And because we've chosen to take the word of God and apply it to our lives. That's why God is making such an amazing uh, impact into the prisons. We see uh, prisoners coming to God daily. Amen. And Mark, if you want to just kind of uh, maybe wrap it up a little bit, we have a few more minutes, and maybe you could share how someone could maybe sow a seed and maybe introduce our concert and then also uh, give a time of salvation for those out there. Yes. Um, 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 right now, what we're doing right now, we're going to prisons all across California. You know, uh, we've been invited out of state also to go to, you know, different prisons and whatnot. And, um, you know, all this, it, it takes finances, you know. Um, so... All we're asking is for you to partner up with us and, and, and join and link up with us. You know, uh, sow a seed, you know, sow a seed. We have a P.O. Box up there, P.O. Box 334, uh, Colton, California, 92324. And that's uh, uh, attention Pastor Joe Balderas at the Way Prison Ministry. So if you if you got to put in your heart today and you, you see, you know, lives transform, we're just showing you a couple lives, but there's many lives being touched in those prisons. Um, you know, we had a brother just came up a little while ago, Brother Maurice. You know, he, he got touched in prison. He got discipled in prison and graduated from the Toomey class in there. And it's just showing you, you know, the love of God and the power of God, what he could do in a man's life. And, um, you know, we don't forget about these prisoners, man. We go there and get back and just plant the seed of love. So if you guys want to, um, you know, uh, link up with us, uh, that's the P.O. Box. And we would love for you guys to team up with us. Also, if you want to introduce our concert, Brother yes. Mark, our powerful dynamic concert. Brother uh, Brian uh, Trejo from Kingdom Music will be coming down April 29th. 
That's uh, Sunday night. He'll be coming out soon. You don't want to miss it, man. Dynamic. Uh, if you want to look him up on YouTube, Brian Trail, he's of Kingdom Music. And he'll be coming down. We'll have Nation of Salvation, amazing worship night. So if you guys want to come down, man, come out. We'll love to have you. We'll be there to greet you, love on you, and everything, man. So uh, amazing night. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mark. Thank you, Sister Diana. And uh, we're going to give you out there an opportunity to get to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You know, you've seen testimonies uh, throughout our time. And you know what? God, you know, will pick up the worst of the worst. Amen. And many of us were like that. I was like that. But you know what? God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and I. And what, you, what that means is that you got to make that personal. When God, when Jesus was on that cross, he thought of you. And how you could respond to that is just, you know what? Put yourself right there that Jesus died specifically for you because he loved you. He did it out of love. And so we want to give you this opportunity to get to know Jesus Christ. And how you do that, uh, the Bible says, with the mouth confession is made, amen, and with faith we believe. So we want to give you that. If you want to uh, repeat this prayer, I just really compel you to say this prayer, amen, because your life will not be the same. Mm -hmm. So I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, and I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I welcome you into my life. I believe that you died, on the, uh, died and you rose again for me. And I invite you into my life. Help me to live for you, Father. And I thank you and I receive you now. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 God bless you. If you said that prayer, uh, I want to let you know that the Bible says that you are a new creation, that old things are passed away and all things have become new become you. And listen, I want you to get involved in, uh, you know, a church that's local right there. Look, you know, if you don't have a church by you, uh, tune into the Cross Network. Uh, get yourself a Bible, uh, a Holy Ghost Bible, and start reading. I encourage you to read in one of the uh, Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, get some of those Romans in there, the book of Romans, and I'm telling you, you're going to become a new man in him. Amen. God bless you. Uh, we love you from the Wayworld Outreach, and we will see you soon. Amen.